Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a yes no message box to prompt your users before running a macro. So, in the previous videos, we learned how to create our personal macro workbook and also customize the ribbon so we can add buttons up here to run our macros. Now, in this video, we're going to learn how to create this prompt here or this message box that will prompt the user before they actually run the macro. So, it gives them an option to either run the macro by pressing yes or to not run the macro by pressing no. And this is very important because you don't want to accidentally hit one of these buttons and then just run your macro or a bunch of code that could potentially mess up this workbook that you're working on because you can't undo macros. It's very important to know that. You can't hit the undo button after you run a macro and you might screw up your workbook. So this uh, message box can really save you because it just adds that extra step to make sure you really want to run this. And of course, when you press yes, it will run the macro. If you press no, it will not run the macro. So let's learn how to create the message box. So I'm going to jump into the VB editor here by pressing Alt F11 on the keyboard. That'll jump me into the VB editor. And right here, I have the add three sheets macro, the one we just saw with the code in it uh, that will basically make the message box appear. It's actually a message box right here that'll make this message box appear and then uh, basically prompt us to either run it or not. So this is the entire code, but I want to step through this and actually create it uh, so you can see how this works. So down below here, I basically have the uh, same macro that we used in the first video when we recorded our macro for our personal macro workbook and added three sheets. So this is all the code right here. It's just this basically one line of code repeated three times to add three sheets to the workbook. So we want to go ahead and add that message box to it. Because if we ran this macro right now, no message box would appear and it would just add three sheets to the workbook without warning. So we need some warning. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going going to use a variable, a message box variable. And don't worry if you don't fully understand these variables yet. I have a whole nother free video series that goes into these in more detail, and I'll give you the link to that below that this video. So we're going to declare a variable with the dim statement here. We're just going to call this variable answer. And I'm going to say as, and then for the type, we're going to use this object browser type called VB message box result. And that basically just holds the result of the message box. So when the user presses yes or presses no, uh, this variable here is just going to hold the answer for us. So we can then use that answer to make a decision. So now that I have that there, the next thing I want to do is basically create the message box. So, and I'm going to set the result of the message box to the answer variable. So I'm going to type answer here. If I can type answer, I'm going to say equals, and then we're going to choose, or we're going to type the message box function, msgbox, and open the parentheses. And you can see here are the, uh, the parameters for the message box function. The first is the prompt. That's basically the message that the user is going to see. So we can just put that in quotes. It shall be just text that we're going to put in quotes. And in this case, we're going to say, are you sure you want to run the macro, something like that. So we'll just add a question there. That's what the user will see. And uh, in that in double quotes, so the text is wrapped in quotes. Then we'll hit a comma. And now we'll see some options for the different message box types. So these are all the different types of message boxes you can have. And in this case, we're using the VB yes, no message box. So this message box will just show us a uh, button for yes and a button for no. So these different message boxes, like this one here, will show us an OK button. Uh, this one will show us an OK button and a cancel button. So there's a bunch of different message boxes that you can use. In this case, we're just going to use the VB yes, no. So I'm going to select that and hit tab. And then the other parameter that we might want is the title of the window. So in this case, we'll, we can just say something like run macro or run our three sheets macro, something like that. And then I'll just close the parentheses. The other parameters are optional and we don't need those right now. So now when we run this, if we were to run this code, uh, we would basically run this. And when the code hit here, 
it would actually show that message box and we'd be either prompted to click the yes button or the no button and when we did that this variable would store the answer for us either yes or no so now uh, down here I'm going to use an if statement to make a decision whether or not to run the code so I'm going to type if here and then we're going to say answer and then equals and now you can see our options here in this case we want to choose vb oops we're going to choose vb yes just like that and then we'll type space and then the word then so basically this is saying if the answer from the message box or the result of the message box is yes is vb yes this constant here yes then we're going to run all of our code so all of the lines below that will run and then I'll just uh, end this if statement down here with end if, the line end if, and then that basically ends my if statement. So what this is saying now is basically we're just going to run this. The user is going to be prompted if either yes or no. If they click the yes button, then our answer variable will hold the yes uh, value. And basically then it'll hit this uh, if statement here. So it's going to say if uh, our answer equals yes, then we'll run all of the code right here. If the user chooses no, then it's basically this will not evaluate to true, and this uh, all this code here will be skipped, and it'll just jump down to the end if line, and then the end subline, and end the macro. So nothing will happen. So that's basically how this works. Any code that you want to run or prevent from being run uh, before the user presses the yes, no box will be right here uh, within the if statement. So now we can try and run this. Well, just uh, to run this, you can hit F5 on the keyboard or the run button right here in the Visual Basic Editor. And that will show us the prompt right there. And we can choose yes or we can choose no. We'll see if we choose yes. That will run the macro, and you can see three sheets have been added here in the background to the workbook. I'll hit Alt F11 again. This time, if we want to step through it, I can put a breakpoint right here to stop it. So now I'll run it again, and uh, this time we're going to say no. So I'll hit no there, and basically you can see the answer variable is holding a number. It actually holds a number, but that number uh, can also be translated to yes or no. In this case, it'll be no. So you can see VB yes equals six. Our answer equals seven. So that would be false. Seven does not equal six. Hit F8 on the keyboard again to jump to the next line. It will skip all this code here and jump to the end if line and not run anything. Hit F8 again, we'll jump to the end subline and then end that procedure. So that's how you can add the message box to just about any macro. And I highly suggest doing that if you're going to put buttons up here in the ribbon to run your macro, to run your personal macros out of your personal macro workbook. It's very simple. Once you get the hang of it, you can basically just copy these three lines right here into any of your macros and then also the end if line at the bottom. So for Four lines of code you can just copy and paste and that will make sure that message box comes up before you hit that or after you hit that button but before the code runs so i hope that helps of course if you have any questions please leave a comment below this video and i'll be happy to help answer them if you'd like to learn more about macros and vba then i have a free three-part video training series that will really help you out in the first video we write our first macro and i also explain the excel object model if you've ever wondered what the dots between the words mean and what order the code runs in, then this video is for you. In the second video, we automate a common Excel task to create a summary report of all the sheets in the workbook. And finally, in the third video, we build a user form to export the sheets out of the workbook. You can learn more and sign up for the free training at excelcampus.com macros. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.